We now come to Minister Gold. Minister yeah. Gold. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. It is a, a real pleasure to follow the Honourable Lady, and while we do disagree on much, uh, she gave a characteristically thoughtful and punchy speech, and she is a great credit to her party, and I wish her and her family well as they wrestle with COVID. Can I also thank you, Mr Speaker, the staff of the House of Commons, um, and everyone who has allowed us to come back for this debate today? Can I also thank the negotiators on both sides who have concluded this historic agreement, Lord Frost and his team, Michel Barnier and his. And can I also thank the thousands of civil servants who have been working uh, uh, for years now in order to bring us to this moment. I also want to thank everyone who spoke in this debate, 59 members. I want in particular to pay tribute uh, to those who have been arguing for our sovereign future outside the European Union for many years now, the members for Stone, Chingford and Woodford Green and North Shropshire in particular. And again, our heart goes out to Owen and to his family. I also want to thank those who argued in the referendum that we should remain in the European Union, but who in this debate gave considered and thoughtful speeches and their support for the deal in front of us and clear pointers for the way forward. The members for Winchester and Huddersfield, Tunbridge Wells and Worley, Leeds Central and Tombridge and Malling all made impressive speeches recognising the importance of democracy. And democracy is why we are here. More people in the 2016 referendum voted to leave the European Union than have ever voted for any proposition in our history. And now, four and a half years later, we can say that we have kept faith with the people. This deal takes back control of our laws, our borders and our waters. And it also guarantees tariff-free and quota-free access to the European market, as well as ensuring our security and it's a good deal for aviation, for haulage, for data, for legal services and financial services. And it leaves us as sovereign equals. No, sovereign equals with the EU. It also builds on the withdrawal agreement concluded by my right hon. Friend, the Prime Minister. And it's important to remember that there are now four million EU citizens who have chosen to make their home in this country. A vote of confidence in Britain. It's also the case that we've concluded the Northern Ireland Protocol. An imperfect, an imperfect instrument, certainly, but one that ensures that we leave as one UK whole and entire so we can begin a new special relationship with our friends in the European Union. I want to turn now to some of the arguments that were made in the debate. And I want to turn, first of all, to the arguments made by the, not, not quite yet, to the arguments made by the Leader of the Opposition. He spoke as usual eloquently, but not perhaps with a hundred percent conviction this time. <laughs> And that's no surprise. He argued that we should stay in the European Union. He argued for a second referendum. He argued that we should stay in the customs union. He argues still for a level of ECJ jurisdiction. At every turn over the course of the last four years, he's tried to find a way of keeping as as closely tied to EU structures as possible. But now, he says, he won't put opposition to Brexit on his leaflets at the next general election. Given the result at the last general election, when he did put opposition to Brexit on his leaflets, I can well understand. Because his attitude to the European Union is rather like his attitude to his former leader, the member for Islington North. He spent years trying to keep as close as possible, and now he wants us to forget all about it. His time in the shadow cabinet, when he was arguing for the member of Islington North to be Prime Minister and for the UK to be under EU structures, presumably, in the words of Mr Corbyn, was a period when he was present but not involved. (laughs) But as a good former Director of Public Prosecutions, I know that he doesn't want us to take account of any of his previous convictions, and indeed, (laughs) I'm grateful for his support today. And he was also right. He was also right in calling out the uh, uh, leader of the Scottish National Party, Uh, because, of course, what the Scottish National Party today are doing are voting for No Deal. Now he's absolutely right. Now, what have they said in the past? What have they said in the past? Nicola Sturgeon said No Deal would be a catastrophic idea. She said that the SNP could not countenance in any way No Deal. She said SNP MPs will do everything possible to stop No Deal, except, of course, actually voting against it today. Indeed, so opposed to No Deal were the SNP that the member for Edinburgh South West went to court to ensure that if the Prime Minister took us out of the European Union without a deal, he would go to jail. 
Now the leader of the SNP is voting to take us out of the EU without a deal. He's doing something that his own party said should be an imprisonable offence. So, so what's he going to do now? Turn himself in? Submit to a citizen's arrest at the hands of the member for Edinburgh South West? If his party follows through on its previous convictions, then I, of course, will campaign for him, and the cry will go out from these benches, free the Lochaber one. After the 2014 referendum, the SNP became the party that just wouldn't take no for an answer. Now that we've got a deal that they asked for, they're the party that won't say yes for an answer. Inconsistent, incoherent, even at risk of self-incarceration, the SNP are indeed prisoners, prisoners of a separatist ideology which puts their narrow nationalism ahead of our national interest. Now, he did touch on Fish, of course, um, the leader of the SNP, but of course, what he didn't give us were the figures. Now, I've got them here. If we look at the increase in stocks, North Sea Hake up relatively by 198%, West of Scotland Safe up by 188%, West of Scotland Cod up by 54%, North Sea Seoul up by 297%. All because we're out of the common fisheries policy, which he would take us back into. This deal today, this bill today, opens a new chapter. Because the people of Britain voted not just for a new settlement with the EU, but a new settlement within the UK. Free ports and fintech, genetic sequencing and investment in general dynamics, a fair deal for farming and fish stocks for coastal communities. And of course, this deal also allows us to regulate more smartly and more effectively for the future. Whether it's artificial intelligence, quantum computing, machine learning, our participation in Horizon 2020 and our investment in science will make us a science superpower. And it's appropriate that we should think of that on today, the day that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, a UK initiative, part of Britain, a global nation, collaborating with others in the pursuit of knowledge and the relief of pain, on the day that that vaccine is approved by the MHRA, let's remember the difficulties and the challenges of this year. Let's also remember how important it is that we should all now come together, that we should all recognise that there are no such thing anymore as Remainers or Leavers. What we all are are Britons dedicated to a brighter future, stronger together, sovereign again, dedicated to ensuring a future of sharing, solidarity and excellence. And that is why I commend this bill to the House. Yeah.